contrast is all about creating visual interest by using opposites in a layout. You can create it in a variety of ways and it's a really effective way of creating an eye-catching layout. But really what it's about is causing conflict between different elements or features on a page. You want things to clash and because they clash it makes one or the other stand out. Now it can be quite understated, quite a low level contrast or it can be quite dramatic and you can achieve that in different ways. Probably the most common way to do it is colour and then typeface but you can also do it with shapes or patterns and even alignment. Creating contrast through colour is about going back to some basic colour theory and looking at the colour wheel and finding colours that oppose one another or sit opposite one another on the colour wheel. If you take the example of yellow and violet, they are opposite from one another on the colour wheel and would create quite a dramatic clash in colour, quite a dramatic contrast that would make, on a purple background, the yellow really pop out. These are often referred to as complementary colours and there's ex some examples placed at the bottom of the screen. Now depending on which combination of complementary or contrasting colours you choose, you get different levels of visibility. So for example, the violet and the yellow in the top right box create quite a dramatic contrast. However, using the kind of cyan blue and the orange creates a contrast, but it's not very visually appealing and it's quite difficult to read. Contrasting typefaces or contrasting typography has become a really popular and really fashionable way of trying to create visual interest and contrast on a page. Now, depending on which combination of typefaces you use, you will get quite a striking contrast and some examples are given on the left of the screen. Now some vary between being serif and sans serif fonts, some are variation between script and serif fonts, but again it creates quite a striking visual appeal on the page to make something look far more interesting rather than just having two fonts that are identical and quite plain and boring. So looking for that contrast in style, even in the weight of the font, how thick each letter is, or in the case on the right of the screen, looking at how you space out fonts or how sharp and crisp the edges are. So a condensed font bringing letters very close together in a typeface and contrasting that with a widely spaced typeface where they've adjusted the kerning or even putting a text which has been reversed onto a black background all makes for a really striking, really good, exciting contrast on that page. Now let's look at an example of two layouts, one that lacks any real contrast and one that makes effective use of contrast. The layout on the left of the screen has got very little contrast. There is some slight contrast in between the typefaces, but not enough for you to take any real notice. However, the layout on the right has a range of approaches to creating contrast, and we'll take you through them just now. So the first and probably most obvious one is at the top of the page, where it says interior styling. You've got a sans serif, dark blue font, quite a tall, narrow font, which contrasts with the red, obviously in colour, but also in the more italic styled serif font. With that contrast, you can see the two differences in the font, in the typeface, and it makes that title stand out a lot more. The next contrast is more between the kind of orangey red colour and a lighter violet colour. That contrast in those two colours really makes those orangey red dots stand out and the line stand out. And again, because they're quite vibrant colours, it really lifts the, the layout overall. Looking a bit closer at the use of shape on the page, the circles and the rectangles, whilst both being geometric shapes, still do contrast with one another. The same way that the use of line, so the orange-red lines, travelling both horizontally and vertically on the page, by having them travel in different directions, that creates another contrast. Also, whilst they are quite formal geometric shapes, there is a clash, again a contrast, with the Wanda Kanza font written across the bottom. It doesn't follow any real grid structure, whereas all the kind of linear lines and shapes are very well placed and aligned and that gives you the example of a contrast between how a page is aligned as well. Looking at one final example of where contrast is used in a layout, this time coming from the Hodder and Gibson model papers. The question asks you to look for contrast within a layout but not refer to colour which is quite a common contrast question in SQA exams. Now looking at the layout on the right, it obviously has made far better use of contrast than the layout on the left. The most obvious one that jumps out is the contrast in typeface. Now, whilst there is a change in colour, that's obviously something we're trying not to refer to. So we have to look at the typeface itself. And the Adventure Plus typeface, much taller, much bolder, much more kind of rugged, which obviously reflects the outdoor nature of the publication. By also having that at a different weight, it stands above all the other text, not just in its placement, but in its visibility and its dominance on the page. 
So by having that different change in typeface and having a typeface that reflects the nature of the publication can create an obvious contrast on the page. The other contrast that's evident here is probably a little bit more subtle and you're looking at the images on the page. The image of the two climbers is cropped quite tightly within a nice circular frame as is the rectangular image of the kind of outdoor background on the right of that layout. However, whilst a nice clean crisp image, the tent has got a full crop. It's been cropped right round the outline of the image. So having that frame for the climbers and then having that change in the full crop also creates a contrast rather than having it within a standard block crop frame. 